The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, a resurrection on Easter Sunday. I felt like God was sweeping me off my feet. One addict's new life. Christ is what sets people free. And the prayers of David. David had a divine revelation. And the promise of a Messiah. The one on that cross is about to change mankind. And David saw that. How the Psalms points us to Christ. And that's the very word that Jesus used. It is finished. On today's 700 Club. Hello and welcome to the 700 Club. Thank you for joining us on this Good Friday. All around the world, Christians remember this day when Jesus offered himself to be crucified and died for our sins. As he was near death, Jesus quoted from the book of Psalms. That same psalm had been written a thousand years earlier. And as Paul Strand reports, it contains vivid descriptions of what Jesus was enduring on the cross. Jesus on the cross said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When I first heard those words as a new Christian, it really shook my faith because it kind of seemed like Jesus was losing his. Well, when you learn what's actually going on with those words, rather than shaking your faith, it may well supercharge it. Jesus was quoting Psalms 22, verse one, word for word. While he could hardly breathe up on the cross, with those few words, he was saying, go read Psalms 22. Since it was written a thousand years before Christ's birth and also before crucifixion was invented, Psalms 22 is an amazing prophetic look at exactly what would happen that historic crucifixion day down to the tiny details. I went through it verse by verse with Bishop Bart Pierce of Baltimore, Maryland's Rock City Church. First off, Jesus knew he wasn't being forsaken. He volunteered to make this blood sacrifice because as the pure lamb of God, he was the only one who could take away the sins of all mankind by shedding his perfect blood for them. He was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It's the purest lamb there's ever been. There was no pure blood than his blood. But because a holy God can't be in the presence of sin. That he was turning his face because he couldn't look at sin. King David describes Christ on the cross declaring, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night and am not silent. Pierce points out how Christ was crying out from the cross, both in the day and night, as God turned the world dark for three hours. Well, when darkness came on the earth, it says, and there was thundering and lightning and the earth shook. Verse 12 says, strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. That's likely symbolic talk for the beefy bull-like Roman soldiers who tortured Jesus and nailed him to the cross. By the way, when it says strong bulls encircle me, the phrase is better translated crown me. Remember, it was the Roman soldiers who jammed a crown of thorns onto Jesus's head. Jews in that day referred to Gentiles as dogs. And verse 16 says, dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. Psalms 22, a thousand years in advance, perfectly describes Roman Gentiles nailing Christ's hands and feet to the cross. Before that was ever even thought about. Verse 18 says, they divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. King David prophetically describes the Romans both dividing and casting lots for Christ's garments. And his description of the agony caused by crucifixion is eerily accurate. Verse 14, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted away within me. All your liquids run out of your body and they go to your feet. Verse 15, my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. He would have become so parched of mouth, he was losing his liquids in his body. Verses 7 and 8 say, all who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Then listen to how Matthew 27 describes what actually happened. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads. And the elders mocked him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him. David had a divine revelation. And you can no longer, once you read uh, Psalm 22, you cannot separate it from the crucifixion, from the story in the Gospels. The two must stay together. The second half of Psalms 22 turns powerfully positive. It speaks of eternal salvation in verse 26. They who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. And in verse 29, all who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive. Well, they can't, but Jesus can give them eternal life. The one on that cross is about to change mankind. And David saw that. 
Verses 30 and 31 conclude the psalm by describing a faith going on into the ages, saying future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, for he has done it. And Pierce shares how the psalm delivers a final surprising revelation. So it says there in the Amplified, that last statement in verse 31, it doesn't say it, it's done. It says the word, it is finished. And that's the very word that Jesus used, it is finished. Jesus on the cross said the exact first words of Psalms 22, and his final words were the exact last words of that psalm. He definitely was pointing us to this amazing thousand-year-old prophecy about his death and its eternal results. Paul Strand, CBN News. Well, I don't know about you, but I have found reading the Psalms on a daily basis is so good for the soul, especially today on Good Friday to spend time in Psalm 22 is just a magnificent experience. And to think how God has woven this together over the centuries to see the plan unfold as David is lamenting and expressing his heart and to see the prophetic words he had for our Savior a thousand years later is just beautiful. And the fact that we have relationship with the Father because of that dark day with so much death and brutality, but the Father did something beautiful out of it. And what he did was make relationship with the Father possible because of the amazing sacrifice of Jesus, Terry. It is a beautiful thing to experience. And it's also a reminder to us, I think, that he does that for us. Yes. He makes something beautiful out of the ashes Amen. of our lives. It's just such a huge picture of who he reminder. is, isn't it? Yeah. Well, coming up, we'll head to the CBN newsroom for today's top headlines, and then later on, the only war won by surrender. A former meth addict and drug manufacturer tells us how he kicked the habit on Easter Sunday. And welcome back to the 700 Club. A major setback for Moscow in its war on Ukraine, losing a key battleship, but promising more attacks on the capital city of Kyiv. Meanwhile, Ukrainian Christians in Amsterdam are sending encouragement through a song filled with hope. Here's CBN's Brody Carter. Russia's most powerful and symbolic Navy vessel in the region, the Moskva, has sunk in the Black Sea. Ukraine reported attacking the ship with two cruise missiles. Russia's Ministry of Defense denied that there had been an attack, only saying a fire sunk the ship in stormy seas. Either way, the Pentagon acknowledges it's a huge blow to Putin's war efforts. This is a cruiser. Uh, they only have three in this class. It's going to have an impact on their capabilities, certainly in the near term. Meanwhile, Ukraine is getting ready for a coming battle in the eastern part of the country. Kremlin troops appear close to capturing Mariupol, a port city that would give Russia advantage in the Donbass region, where analysts predict will be a major offensive. Humanitarian efforts here are close to failing. It's a devastating situation, the people being starved to death. And the head of the CIA also warned Thursday that the U.S. cannot ignore the possibility that Russia might use tactical nuclear weapons in Ukraine. But he quickly added the CIA has no practical evidence to back up that concern. Despite the hardships and threats, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky praised his people for their resolve since the Russian invasion in February. And the Ukrainians are getting encouragement from outside their country as well. In the midst of war and heartbreak, Ukrainian Christians gathered in the streets of Amsterdam with this message of hope for Ukrainians that's going viral. The lead pastor of this outdoor church encouraged Ukraine and the world, saying when God appears, anything is possible. Brody Carter, CBN News. Even though parts of Ukraine remain peaceful, still millions have had to flee their homes and become refugees. As Wendy Griffith shows us, CBN's Orphans Promise is on the scene, providing them shelter. Here in Lviv, a city of about one million people, you'd never know a bloody war is raging just hundreds of miles east of here. The cafes are crowded, the shops are open, and people seem to be enjoying life. But despite appearances, the war is still on everyone's mind. Yeah, but uh, for sure I'm worried because um, because of my strong makeup, you can see my real emotions. Um, because every day we are crying when we check all news. Uh, every day um, we are worried about our future country and uh, 
yeah, we're really hoping that everything will end soon. Among those not leaving is Orphan's Promise, which has turned all of their centers here in Ukraine into refugee shelters and vows to stay and help as many Ukrainians as they can. We are, we are trying to do what we can do. We cannot to save every, every, everyone, but the most important part of our job is to share good news. We are, we are trying to share good news in this time because all people are open to accept Jesus. And we have so many people who, are, uh, who accepted Jesus in, that, in, in this time. The fighting spirit is alive and well here in Ukraine as people continue to hope and pray that this war will soon end. Wendy Griffith, CBN News, Lviv, Ukraine. CBN's Operation Blessing is also on the scene to help those in need. You can help Orphans Promise and Operation Blessing in disaster relief efforts. Call 1-800-700-7000. Let us know that you want to give to the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. You can also write us at CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. Simply note Disaster Relief Fund in the memo line of your check. You can also text OB Crisis to 71777 and visit our website, cbn.com, ob.org or orphanspromise.org. Anything you're able to do is greatly appreciated. Florida is the latest Republican-led state to pass a pro-life law restricting abortion. Governor Ron DeSantis signed the law banning most abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. He did that into law on Thursday, saying all children deserve an opportunity. This is a, uh, a time where these babies have beating hearts. They can move, they can taste, uh, they can see, they can feel pain, they can suck their thumbs. The law takes effect July 1st. It contains exceptions if the abortion is necessary to save a mother's life, prevent serious injury, or if the fetus has a fetal, fatal abnormality. But it does not allow for exemptions in cases where pregnancies were caused by rape, incest, or human trafficking. The law is expected to face legal challenges. Multiple Republican-led states have enacted abortion bans ahead of a Supreme Court decision that could limit abortion rights or overturn Roe versus Wade. The Republican National Committee pulled out of the bipartisan Presidential Debate Commission Thursday, putting the future of debates between major party candidates in doubt. The GOP group unanimously voted to withdraw from the commission on presidential debates, which has organized the debates for decades. RNC Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel said the commission has refused to consider moving up the debates to before early voting starts and selects moderators who are slanted against Republican candidates. Turning now to the Middle East, Palestinians clash with Israeli police before dawn today at the Alaska Mosque compound in Jerusalem as thousands gathered for prayer during the holy month of Ramadan. Medics said at least 152 Palestinians were wounded. The holy site, which is called the Temple Mount by Israel, is sacred to Jews and Muslims. It has often been the epicenter of unrest between Palestinians and Israelis. The clashes come at a particularly sensitive time. This year is Islamic holy month of Ramadan. It coincides with the Passover, a major week-long Jewish holiday beginning today at sundown, and the Christian Holy Week, which culminates on Easter Sunday. And speaking of Easter in Israel, we're going to be bringing you an Easter service from the Garden Tomb in Israel. Watch it live at 2 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Easter Sunday morning at sunriseservice.com or on the CBN Family app. After 2 a.m., you will be still able to watch it. It will be available for you on demand. Simply go to sunriseeasterservice.com. Those are your top stories from the CBN Newsroom. Gordon and Terry are back with much more of the 700 Club. It's all coming up right after this. Jordan knew how it was going to end. His father would get a phone call and the person on the line would tell him that his son was dead. Over the years, Jordan had tried and failed to conquer his drug addiction. Still, he was never able to break that cycle of abuse until his dad brought him to church one Easter Sunday. I knew for sure that I was gonna die a drug addict and I had no desire to continue living. For Jordan Wilson, the long slide to hopelessness was one that no one saw coming. He'd grown up in a Christian home with loving parents. His dad, Roger, remembers how proud he was of his son and his faith. He, you know, he wasn't an undercover Christian, you know? Everybody knew where he stood. 
I would go home tired from the day, but I had to get my time with Jesus. Jordan was well liked at school and church, and that drew the attention of girls. At 16, he began dating a 19 year old. Instead of, you know, going to church, I would stay at my girlfriend's house. By 17, worldly pleasures had replaced his love for God altogether. Marijuana, pain pills, and alcohol quickly consumed him. I loved the party lifestyle in the beginning. I lived with friends, we threw parties. I thought that I was Superman. I thought that I was invincible. His father, Roger, noticed a difference in his son and did the only thing he knew to do. I've prayed for that boy almost every day of his life. Still, Jordan was spending $100 a day on pills. His addiction demanded it, or suffer withdrawals. I had to get 20 pills a day. That's what was going to keep me from being sick. It didn't matter if I could afford it or not, I was going to get high. Jordan also became addicted to meth. When he was fired from his factory job, Jordan, with the help of a friend, began manufacturing and selling the drug, Spice. There didn't really seem to be an option for me at the time. I needed money. I needed drugs. It didn't matter what kind of trouble I may be in. I was going to do what I had to do. That is, until an informant tipped off the police about Jordan's dealing. When I was busted and the police picked me up and threw me on the ground, I was so obliterated from the drugs that I really couldn't grasp just how hot the water that I was in was. I was at work when I got a call that he'd, you know, he'd been arrested. I just remember standing and just feeling absolutely Helpless. Over the next three years, Jordan was in jail 10 times and kicked out of rehab six times. Both he and his father thought the cycle would never end. I was just afraid that uh, I was going to get a call some night. Overdosed, killed. Though he was in rehab, he had failed. So I thought, is he going to be another statistic? I knew for sure that I was gonna die a drug addict. Uh, I started shooting up, uh, I shot up crystal meth, I was addicted to pills again, and I had no desire to continue living. So I know what can happen. I know what God says he can do. And I was in that spot praying for a miracle. Jordan again tried to stop using and began the detox process. Then on Easter Sunday, 2016, Roger had a request for his son. My dad said, Jordan, this Sunday is Easter. Will you come to church with me? I said, no, dad, I'm sick. I'm detoxing from drugs. I can't go. And because it was my birthday, you know, kind of laid the birthday card on him. I was 27 years old. I didn't have a birthday gift for my dad. So I thought this is the least I can do. And so I agreed to go to church with my dad for his birthday on Easter Sunday. During the service, Jordan felt a spark of hope that he hadn't felt for years. The pastor said, if there's anyone who wants to give their heart to Christ, or maybe you did a long time ago, you want to reconnect with Christ, today's your day. Jordan jumped up, I mean, just shot down the aisle, down the stairs to the altar. As I was at that altar, I felt like God was sweeping me off my feet. Uh, I realized that, wait, this is Resurrection Sunday. Jesus Christ is risen. It was absolutely. Other than the day I watched him be born, the greatest day I was watching him give his heart back to God. And I've never been the same since. I never drank another drop. I never used another drug since that day. So now I'm closer with the Lord than I've ever been more so than when I was a teenager. Uh, but I walk with them, talk with them every single day. If I don't get that one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus every day, I'm just not right. Jordan says it was God with him that allowed him to finally overcome the addiction that had stolen so much from his life. This relationship with Christ has taught me to love people. And so he has enabled me to care about people. Um, and I realized that my life is bigger than me. I'm not the lead role in my story, he is. And uh, realizing that, uh, is, gives me a life truly worth living. Today, Jordan is married with two children and is the author of a new book, Jesus is Greater Than Drugs, The Only War Won by Surrender. 
He is also the development director of a rehab facility he was once kicked out of. God's plan was much different. God's plan was, no, you're going to fall in love with me. You're going to work in ministry, and you're going to come back here as an executive staff member. If you surrender to Christ, he'll fight for you. He'll do what you can't do. As someone who tried it without Jesus, that there is a big difference. You may be able to get sober without Christ, but you'll never be free without Christ. And Christ is what sets people free. This is a story, like many, that could have had a different ending. You know what Jordan's dad feared could have happened. God had a bigger and a better plan. And yet along the way, there needs to come a place where, whether it's accidental, like it was for Jordan, it wasn't just Easter, but it was his dad's birthday and he didn't have a, a gift and he felt guilty, so he went to church. But he, he cooperated with an invitation that changed his life. You know, I can remember in my own life before I knew Jesus, many, many people coming up and trying to share the Word of God with me. We called them Jesus freaks at that time. I wanted no part of it, but I had been raised to be polite, so I'd be really nice and I'd listen and then I'd walk away. But you know, what was shared with me in those moments, though it didn't feel like it penetrated my heart, though I put up the wall that I had built there, Every one of those encounters chipped away a little bit more at the rock that had become my heart. Until one day, circumstances in my own life were grave enough that I too came to the place of surrender. You know, surrender means you don't fight anymore. It means you give up the battle. It means you acknowledge that someone else wins, not you. And if you're in a place that's hurting in your life, and you keep trying over and over and over again to climb up a mountain you can't get up, a wall you can't get over, you know, a place you can't break through to. Stop and understand what Jordan has come to understand. You can't do it. Not only can you not do it, you're not supposed to be able to do it. Because you have a Heavenly Father who created you to be relational with Him. And he's the only one who can fit that need and do it for you. So today, if you find yourself, like Jordan found himself, just hitting your head against the same wall again and again and again, it might not be drugs, might not be alcohol, can be lots of things, you know, and you just are tired, come home to the Father heart of God. Jesus paid the price. When he said it is finished, that was for you, just like it was for me, just like it was for Jordan. And you can start that today. It just happens like this. You acknowledge, first of all, this is the surrender. I can't do this. I'm not going to make it. I can't do it on my own. Then you come to him and you say, Jesus, I get it. You died for me. You died so I didn't have to figure this out. I didn't have to do it. I didn't have to fight this fight. So I'm coming to you and I'm saying, Savior, I need you. I want you. So I'm surrendering my attempts at trying to make my life work. And I'm coming to you instead and I'm saying, Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart come into my mind and the way that I think, come into my circumstances, my situation, and change me. I want to be your man. I want to be your woman. I want to be a child of God. I want to know your love and your forgiveness for all the things I've done that have hurt your heart. Be the Savior of my soul and the Lord of my life as well. I'm giving it all to you. And I'm asking you to take my life and make it yours. And I'm asking it in Jesus' name. If you've prayed that prayer, then like so many of us, you have begun an amazing journey. I want you to know it's the journey you were created for. In the beginning, sometimes you think, okay, now I've prayed the prayer, I've surrendered, what do I do? Well, we want to help you with that. This little packet called A New Day is filled with wise counsel. And how do you follow Jesus? How do you become a child of God? What does that look like? 
It's yours for the asking. The number to call is toll free. It's 1-800-700-7000. Just call and say, I prayed that prayer with that lady on TV and I'd like the new day packet. We'll get it out to you right away. Andrew. Thank you, Terry. Powerful story. Well, coming up later, an Easter miracle. One man rolls into a church service in a wheelchair and he walks out on his own two feet. We're going to see his amazing story. Plus, Terry and I will be praying for you. We want you to pray with us, so don't go away. Rhea is six years old and she's already an evangelist. She loves to tell her friends about how Jesus forgave her sins. And that's a lesson she learned while watching CBN's Superbook. Six-year-old Rhea was born into a Muslim family in Indonesia, but she said she didn't really understand what that meant. I was never taught about my religion, and I never learned how to do daily prayers. Rhea went to live with her aunt after her parents abandoned her. Her aunt, who had become a Christian, invited Rhea to church. That's when she watched CBN's Superbook for the first time. When I went to Sunday school, I watched the episodes about Solomon and Esther. From those episodes, I learned about love, that they both loved God and they loved their people. Later, she watched the story of Paul's conversion on the road to Damascus. I saw that when he encountered Jesus, he repented. Rhea prayed to become a Christian after that episode. I prayed, Lord Jesus, today I invite you to come into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. After that, I felt so happy because I knew that Jesus forgave my sins. Rhea has already started inviting her friends to come and watch Superbook with her at Sunday School. I love to hear about Jesus and Superbook, and I'm grateful for all the people who support Superbook because through it, I came to know Jesus. Thank you. Well, CBN Partners, we want to thank you so much. Look what you've done for that precious six-year-old girl. She's living in heartache because her parents abandoned her. And you would have liked to have helped, I'm sure, if you could when you knew about that. And you did, because she got to watch programming that touched her heart. And here she is praying to receive Christ as her Savior and saying now she is full of joy. And she wants to tell, six years old, she wants to tell other people about the hope that she has found. So thank you so much for partnering with us. Superbook is just one of the many things we do here at CBN. If you'd like to join with us, you can just call 800 700 7000 simply say I'd like to join the 700 Club. It's just $20 a month. When you do, we want, you, we want to send you Pat's latest book. It's called The Power of the Holy Spirit. And you will really grow in your faith, learning what the, who the Holy Spirit is, how can, he can empower you in your life. And it's yours when you become a 700 Club partner. If you're specifically interested in Superbook, which I highly recommend, it's great for grandparents and parents. My kids have loved watching Superbook. For a recurring gift of just $25, CBN Animation members will receive three copies of each new Superbook DVD as they're released. Plus, you're going to get instant streaming access to watch all episodes of seasons one through five on your smartphone or computer. And when you join CBN Animation today, we'll send you three copies of our newest episode, which is called Gizmo's Roadmap to Easter. Here's a bonus for you, Superbook's Easter double feature DVD with two classic episodes, The Last Supper and He is Risen. So you'll receive five DVDs, free online streaming, it's a lot of stuff, access to over 65 full length episodes of Superbook just for $25 when you join CBN Animation today. So give us a call, 800-700-7000, or go to CBN.com and join today. Terry? Well, coming up next, the message of Easter, as told through a few croissant rolls and a couple of marshmallows. We'll show you a fun and tasty way you can teach your children about the resurrection of Jesus. That's next. On Good Friday, Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice. He died so that you and I could have life, eternal life. 
Now, it may be hard for children to fully grasp this concept of his death, burial, and resurrection. So my granddaughter Izzy and I, plus her friends Jingles and Gingerbread, want to show you a delicious way that you can share the story of the empty tomb. It's the Easter season, and if you're like me, you are probably always looking for things that can make your holiday more significant spiritually, especially the holidays that we celebrate, like Christmas and Easter. And, you know, we can talk to our children about what these things mean, and we can even read to them about it, but a picture's worth a thousand words. And so I have a great little way of helping you show your kids what the real message of Easter is, which is that Jesus is alive. And so this is my granddaughter, Isabella. She likes to bake and cook with me. And so she's here to help me today, right? We're going to make what we call resurrection rolls. And so I think you're going to like this. First of all, preheat your oven, if you will, to 375, because you're going to need that when we're all done and ready with this. But we're starting with croissant rolls. And these croissant rolls represent, and you can share this with your child as you're doing this, these represent the grave cloth that Jesus was wrapped in. And so the marshmallows that are here is they represent Jesus because they're white and pure and he was without sin. I'm going to give you one of those and ask you to dip it in the water which represents the oils that were embalming Jesus' body. And then these spices this represents the spices. It's really cinnamon and sugar, and you're gonna roll it in there. Okay, get the top, the bottom, the sides. There you go. And then we're gonna wrap it in the grave cloth. So you wanna start with that one and push it in and wrap and roll at the same time if you can. That a girl, keep, keep wrapping. There you go, keep pushing the sides in. Yep, yep, it doesn't matter how it looks, it mostly just needs to be enclosed. You know, you want it all the way in there. Perfect, and then you wanna set it there. You wanna do one more and I'll do one too? Okay, water first, or I should say embalming oils first. Spices next, that's it, good, good. These not only are tasty, they make your house smell good when they're baking. Put it in the grave cloth, put the marshmallow in, and we're seeing that Jesus was completely wrapped up when they put him in the tomb. Now we've got all of these ready to go. And the stove represents the tomb. So do you want to carry this over to the stove that we have preheating? And we'll put them in the tomb. Pull this down and then I'll stick it in here for you. So for the 10 to 12 minutes, uh, watch that in your oven to see which one works with your oven, that we're going to let the resurrection rolls actually bake in the oven. This is a teachable moment. It's a wonderful opportunity to open up the Word of God with your little one or little ones and share the rest of the story because this is the good part. You know, after we've talked about the price that Jesus paid for for our sin and to have us be able to have the gift of eternity with him. This is what happens. We're going to read uh, John chapter 20. Izzy, what's the title of this one? Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Great message. On Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran to Simon Peter and to Jesus' favorite disciple and said, they've taken the Lord from the tomb. We don't know where they've put him. Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. They ran side by side until the other disciple ran faster than Peter and got there first. He bent over and saw the strips of linen lying inside the tomb, but he didn't go in. When Simon Peter got there, he went into the tomb and saw the strips of cloth. He also saw the piece of cloth that had been used to cover Jesus' face. It was rolled up and in a place by itself. The disciple who got there first went into the tomb and when he saw it, he believed. At that time, Peter and the other disciples did not know that the scripture said Jesus would rise to life. Jesus died so that our sins could be forgiven, but he was resurrected so that we could have life forever with him. 
That's why we call these resurrection rolls. And you know, it's not just the fun of making them. You're going to see the surprise when they come out of the oven. And that's a message that your children won't forget. And it's a taste you're going to love as well. We're still waiting on the resurrection rolls. Can you run and get a surprise for our friends? You know, I know at this time of the year that there are lots of people who are uncomfortable with images like bunnies and chicks and flowers and candy because they feel like it takes away from the real meaning of Easter. But let me say, in our house, we see those things, not the chocolate, but the living things, as new life and a reinforcement of exactly what we've talked about here, that Jesus came to give us new life and to give it to us abundantly. So that's what we feel at our house, and we are particularly partial to bunnies, can I just say, Izzy especially. So Izzy, can you bring your friends over here? <laughs> I want you to meet, in keeping not so much with Easter, but Christmas, this is gingerbread, and this is Jingles. Hello, Jingles, where are you? There you are. <laughs> and so we celebrate every day the new life that Christ has given us, but these two little friends are just reminders to us that new life is a gift from God. And so whatever you're doing in your home for Easter, we pray that all of those symbols will come together under the banner of a God who loved us so, so much. Well, you know what? You want to put your friends back, and it's almost time to get our resurrection rolls out of the oven. So let's see if they're done. Now, your oven may cook slower or faster than mine. Um, ooh, just saying. <laughs> I'm a carb girl. What do you think? Ooh, look at that. Come on, Izzy, let's take these back over here. So here are our resurrection rolls. My kitchen smells heavenly. We've got something that's really fun for you to share with your family for your Easter brunch or even prior to Easter, just to, to make the message firm and strong in your children's hearts that Jesus died to cover the sin that is definitely a part of each of our lives. But on Easter Sunday, he rose again, and that gives us new life, eternal life with him. These smell so good. Izzy's the official baker. I'm the official taster. So I think I'm going to just take a bite of one of these and see the deal is when you open them up, they're empty. There's no marshmallow inside. And that's the grave, wasn't it? You know, the tomb, when Jesus came out of the tomb, the tomb was empty. And look at this. Oh, well, you're going to love this. Really good. You want to bite? She doesn't like cinnamon. <laughs> but enough for all of the rest of us, right? You'll love doing this with your kids. And can I tell you, it will leave a picture in their minds of the sacrifice of Christ, the wonder of the resurrection, because in the end, in every one of these, the tomb is empty. Happy Easter. You can get more Easter content by going to our special section on CBN Family, and it's we hope the kind of uh, for the kind of entertainment that will bless you and also that'll be enjoyment for you. You can listen to a special communion message from Pat Robertson. You can tour the Garden Tomb with Chris Mitchell. You can hear Gizmo and Miss Tina answer all sorts of questions that you may have about Easter and the Resurrection, and there's so much more. So be sure to head to cbnfamily.com or download the CBN Family app on your favorite smart device and you'll have it with you wherever you go. Andrew? Terry, that was precious, watching you and, <laughs> and Izzy you. do. I'm still trying to figure out where the marshmallows went. I'll be yeah. thinking about that all day. In yeah. my stomach. <laughs> that was a, a beautiful little piece. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Well, up next, a paralyzed man is healed twice. The wheelchair preacher tells us how he received a walking miracle on Easter Sunday. Plus, Terry and I will be praying for you. Please don't go away. In more than 150 years of biblical archaeology, not one thing has been discovered that disproves the Bible. You can learn how archaeology supports the stories of the Bible in CBN Films' new documentary, Written in Stone, Kings and Prophets, 
For your gift of any dollar amount, we're going to send you an all-new DVD. You'll also get exclu exclusive instant streaming access in 4K on the CBN Family app. So just go to cbn.com slash written in stone, or you can call us 1-800-700-7000. I think you'll love this. Andrew? Well, here's a powerful story. After an accident, Jermaine Green was paralyzed on his left side. Then he was healed for three weeks. Less than a month after his miracle, Jermaine blacked out. And when he woke up, he was paralyzed again. He wondered why God's healing was only temporary. Two years later, Jermaine received the answer to that question on Easter Sunday. On November 14th, 2004, a trash truck slams into Jermaine Green's car, putting him in a coma with severe head trauma. His dad, Bishop Joe Green Sr., and his mother, Edna, rushed to the hospital. It was very, very painful in the sense that being uh, in a coma and not really knowing whether or not he was going to come out or not. I was like, okay, Lord, I said, you told me he was going to be a preacher. He had work to do. I said, God, whatever this is, I said, God, you got to turn this around. Jermaine was paralyzed on one side of his body. His parents and their church prayed nonstop for healing. Then, one night... We're praying, I kind of opened my eyes and I looked up. Left hand was going up. It was going up. And he did like this. But the thing was, he didn't know he raised his hand. God did it, you know, he raised his hand. That was encouragement to us. The next morning, he was up and walking. I'm walking around my room. I'm giving God praise. Tears are falling from my eyes. I cannot believe that God has just given me a miracle. Jermaine went home to his wife and children, but three weeks later at his parents' church, he blacked out. When he woke up, the left side of his body was paralyzed again. I just felt like the Lord wasn't with me. I felt like, why, why would you why would you allow me to be healed just to be sick again? Doctors diagnosed him with hemoparesis, a weakness of one side of his body. I believe in God for a miracle. And so, you know, now my approach about it is any day now. We're gonna ride the wave and as soon as he waves his hand at me, I'm gonna get up and I'll be fine. Uh, but it didn't happen like that. I felt like, what could I have done that was wrong in a month? You just healed me from this. Why am I experiencing this again? All attempts of physical therapy failed, and Jermaine had to face life confined to a wheelchair. Shortly thereafter, Jermaine and his wife divorced. Eventually, he became a single father of four. Jermaine fell into a depression and came to the conclusion that it would be better for everyone if he ended his life. I got these blood pressure pills, and I had them in my hand. And so what stopped me was my daughter crawling on the floor, just laughing and smiling, <laughs> to the point to where she climbed up, you know, on my leg. So she sat right next to the bottle of pills. And uh, that's what actually saved me from doing I didn't do it. Eventually, Jermaine's parents moved in to help him. During this time, Jermaine had a revelation no matter what his circumstances, he would live his life for God. I had made up in my mind, it didn't matter. I'm gonna preach, I'm gonna prophesy, I'm gonna do whatever you tell me to do. If, I, if I'm in this wheelchair until I die, so be it. Then, two years later, on Easter Sunday, 2007, Jermaine was bringing the service to a close when he says God told him to tell the church to praise him. And I just remember him saying something about, it's another wave of anointing. Um, God is getting ready to work a miracle. He just stood up right after that and started walking. And I stood up to that miracle. And I'm looking at him. And what he doesn't know is what I saw. He wasn't walking. He was gliding. That's the way he looked going down the aisle. That was the most beautiful thing to see him. It took Jermaine a moment to realize he had been healed. I'm still like, oh my God, what happened? It's a miracle. 
So people are hugging me and I'm hugging them and it's still not really hitting me totally that, okay, you're up. Now, I didn't know I was out of the wheelchair until I saw that my wheelchair was empty. When we left the church, the most powerful moment was the wheelchair assisted me in, but I was taking it out. Later, Jermaine went back to the doctor for a checkup. The doctor comes in, you're up. I said, yes, sir, I am. He said, this is a miracle. Jermaine has since come to be known as the wheelchair preacher. Now remarried with the blended family, he and his wife Margaret minister hope through God's healing power on their weekly radio show and in churches. He restored everything that I lost. The Lord blessed me with a wonderful woman of God. She's the one that God told me that's mine. So she's my Holy Ghost girl. He's still a healer. He's everything that we need. All we need to do is ask him. If you just trust God, and if you just believe, God will hear you, and he will answer prayer. Oh, what a marvelous answer to prayer. I hope you're encouraged by Jermaine's story, too, that he, he struggled. He, he was healed, and he was confident in it, and then he had a setback. But he and his family kept praying, and Terry and I want to pray for you. You heard the Green family say there was an anointing, and we pray for an anointing now as we pray together. Before we do, we want to share some praise reports. Here is one from Shaniqua of Westbury, New York. She was diagnosed with severe IBS, suffered from chronic stomach pain and terrible acid reflux. While watching the 700 Club last month, she saw a testimony about a woman who was healed of her same condition and by faith, she believed God for her condition and complete healing. She called the CBN prayer line a week later, giving praise to God. She feels like she has a whole new digestive system and stomach. Praise the Lord. That is a praise the Lord. Well, this is Greg. Uh, he sent in uh, a testimony. His blood pressure was out of control. It was so elevated, he couldn't even do a stress test. He called CBN's prayer line and asked for prayer. Within 24 hours of prayer, his blood pressure was under control. He's now able to walk three times a day. He has no more chest pain. His doctor told him to cut back on his meds. So, well, there you go. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray for you because we're that's why we're having this time right now we want to enter in with you to the presence of the God who can do the impossible many of you I know are suffering from various various things and let's ask God today let's ask God for you so pray with us please father you have created us you know every element of our being the bible says not a hair falls from our head not a sparrow falls from the tree but that you see it and so, God, today we come to you as your children, bringing you the things that are burdens on our hearts, the things that have uh, touched our lives in negative ways. And we're asking you, God, to do a miracle in us, a miracle for us. Holy Spirit, come, teach us your ways, touch us with your power. Someone literally sweating and shaking because they feel they are in such need of a drink. And this has been a journey for you, and you've committed your ways to God and tried to stay sober. And this is really difficult. And the Holy Spirit is just ministering to you now, ministering to your body, bringing you peace. And I think you've been clinging to this uh, Ephesians 5 where it says, don't get drunk on wine, but be filled with the Spirit. The Lord has seen your journey and loves you and has compassion for your efforts. And he's saying now, stop striving, but rest in me. I'm taking this burden away in Jesus' name. There's someone else, you saw that testimony about the stomach issues and you have a hole in your stomach. It's actually been quite life interrupting. God is healing that for you and it will not recur and the issues you've dealt with are gone in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we know you hear the hard cry of people. And for those uh, desires, Father God, we pray for healing and comfort in Jesus' name. I want to leave you with these words from 1 Peter. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. We'll see you next time.